The council is now in session. Corey Peabody with the race lead, but on the backstretch, second place goes to Andrew Tate. He's not going to have enough real estate to cover him. The defending champion will repeat as the Columbia Cup, Apollo Columbia Cup winner. Second place, Andrew Tate. Third, Dustin Echoes in the flavor pack, Jamie Nielsen. Mercury's Coffee comes in fourth on the back straight Gunner O'Farrell in the Gunners by Keith Batano Holmes with a fifth place finish. Corey Peabody, 2024 Apollo Columbia Cup champion. As I like to say, that's really got a nice ring to it. I'm loving it. You know, Daryl Manessa's strong hometown for them. Get another win here. I think this is our third one since we started the team four years ago. The 2024 Water Follies came and went with strong racing and Corey Peabody claiming the Columbia Cup, his third in four years. The U9 Miss Beacon Plumbing came out victorious, but the U1 Miss Beacon Electric, driven by J. Michael Kelly, wasn't as lucky. The other strong racing boat was involved in a wreck on Saturday that devastated the whole but misery loves company. The U-12 Graham Trucking and U-27 Miss Apollo by Wiggins Racing also saw damage. When a crash does happen, many don't realize that there's a team on standby for the worst case scenarios. They kept quite busy this past weekend. We'll catch up with Water Ops Director Lauren Johnson, and it wasn't just boats that took to the sky. We'll also catch up with F10 pilot Lindsey Johnson in this episode of The Sports Council. The Council is now in session. With a personality shaped by being an athlete and a background in mainstream sports media, I found that the stories I was most interested in telling were the ones often overlooked, the ones that might not otherwise be told, the ones that show the intangible and not just the highlight reel. The Sports Council is about highlighting the great, the good, the unique, and everything in between in the Pacific Northwest sports world. I'm Jamie Council. Thanks for joining me. You're listening to the Sports Council on 1340 ESPN, the Tri-Cities leader in sports. and hours of boredom, punctuated by moments of sheer terror. I'm not talking about the drivers, but about the rescue boats on standby with certified divers every moment there's a boat on the water. Lauren Johnson is the director of water ops for the Tri-City Water Follies, and his team kept busy over the weekend. Hours and hours of boredom, punctuated by moments of sheer terror. And that is, that is our motto, and that's what we do out here. So if you can take that in, into concept, we sit out there for a long time, and it's hot, and it's brutal. And this, you got the sun coming up from the water, and you got the sun beating down on you, and there's no reprieve. And then when something happens and a boat goes over, these guys are like clockwork well-oiled machine and they go to work and again they make me look good <laughs> so that's it from monitoring water levels and setting the course to serving as the rescue team their behind the scenes work full of volunteers is an important part of the water follies my name is Lauren Johnson. I am the Water Operations Director and Vice President for the Tri-City Water Follies. And tell me, why is having a, what you do, Water Ops Director, a necessity to the Water Follies? Well, basically anything that happens on the water, I'm in charge of. So it's water level, it's current, it's uh, patrol boats setting the course. We, we actually set the course with GPS course coordinates on every pin that gets put out there. Uh, Stratton Survey does a good job of helping us with that. Um, we also run the rescue team. The rescue is the big part of it. Um, 
and the rescue team here goes back many many years and is we are we strive to be the gold standard of any race site of having our own assets our own boats our own rescue team our own uh, trauma kits we have our own Stokes baskets not a lot of race sites have that um, and the the experience that we have here in the Tri-Cities that have been passed down over the years of how to pop a canopy open, how to get a driver out of the bottom hatch, uh, things like that are just critical to our jobs and we train for it year round. And why do people rely on the rescue team and the boat racing world? Well, sometimes in, in a in an accident, uh, we do have H1 Rescue that is their first, they are the first responders. Um, however, we have divers that are also trained. And if you get a multi-boat incident that happens, H1's gonna need some help. That is why we train to be the best in the business at what we do. Um, so when a boat flips, we, we never know what the condition of that driver is until we pop that canopy and get our eyes on him. Put a hand on the chest just to let them know that, hey, we're here and we're gonna get you out of here and you're gonna be okay. Um, getting the belts off, getting the steering wheel off and getting them out of the canopy, that's what we train to do. And not a lot of people watching the water follies know that for every single race, there is a rescue team on the water ready. Well, I can say, I, I can honestly say that I know that here in the Tri-Cities, they know what the rescue team means. They've seen us go into action and they've seen us pull drivers out. Uh, Dave Vilwalk was here when he lost his fingers and our rescue team pulled him out. Granted, we didn't find his fingers, but. Dave Vilwalk and a blowover, All Doors Incorporated, turn number one. Several things have happened here. Uh, Dean Chenoweth died here on the Columbia River. Uh, our rescue team was there. Um, so the public knows we're here. And the reason I know that is during our opening ceremonies, we do a parade lap where the Miss Tri-Cities goes by, our president goes by, all of our, a lot of our, uh, uh, what would you call them, their, their VIP people that would go by in, in front and the rescue team follows them up with all six of our sleds. And when that rescue team goes by, it literally gives me chills every year that is so quiet when everybody else goes by, but when rescue comes by, the crowd goes wild. And that's how I know that the Tri-Cities knows what the rescue team means to this race. So by rescue team, what goes into stepping onto one of those sleds? It's not, here's your volunteer sign-up sheet. What goes into it? It's, it's uh, a lot of these guys started out as kids. They started out as kids and they would run onto the docks when the boats would come in and they'd put ice and water and, and drinks on the boat, make sure our gas tanks are full. And those kids, they come up. And when used to be uh, 16 years of age, you could get on a rescue sled. Today it's 18. So it puts it back a few years, but uh, you know, having the kids here and even today, the kids that are here, we know that that's going to be the next generation of the Tri-City Columbia Cup rescue team. So, like I said, a lot of these kids come up through the years and they decide they want to be a diver. So they get with our dive coordinator and they get, uh, you know, certified to dive. And then they train on how to pop a canopy or how to dive on an, on an accident. Um, and there's two types of divers. There's the, there's the diver and then there's the top diver, uh, the, the diver that gets on top of the boat. So they work in unison together to get the driver out, depending on which way to go. So um, if you want to be a driver of a sled, you know, as soon as they turn 16, they get their boater's card. Then they start slowly into driving a boat. Our sleds are a little different than your normal V-hole boat. Our sleds are flat bottom. They turn a lot differently than, than a regular boat does. Um, they, they more skid uh, than, than actually.
actually turn. Um, so it's a different beast to drive. Um, so learning, getting into that slowly. Uh, we've got a, a kid that's coming up right now that's, uh, he's training with his grandpa on a sled to take over uh, as a driver on that boat when grandpa finally retires off the water. And what is your background? That's kind of uh, talking with Aaron Stevens of, oh, well, I used to be the water boy, and then they gave me more. And you, you, I'm kind of hearing the same story of you, where I just used to help out here and there. So um, tell me about your background, that now you're in double digits. It's technically your 11th year, but 10th with the COVID. So right. a decade of uh, being in it as water ops director. Well, I started I, I owned an aquarium shop downtown Kennewick and a few doors down from us was a cupcake shop and I like cinnamon rolls and they made really good cinnamon rolls became friends with them at the time he was the water ops director for the Columbia Cup and he begged me to come down and help out so I finally did it one year and I was a firefighter on a fireboat uh, never fought a fire in my life, besides a campfire. Taught me how to use a water pump and how to fight a fire. Fine, I went out and did it. Did it one year. Um, there were some issues on the boat that year where we put the points leader up on a rock and a skid fin. And uh, I took over driving of the boat and got it off the rocks and uh, showed up the next year. And that team was clapping on the dock to people that stand out. We also have a very large trophy uh, with an actual hydroplane prop in it that we give out to the outstanding volunteer of the year. Um, and that trophy was given to me two years ago. And when it was given to me, everyone, I'll try to do this without choking up, but uh, they, they all said, you brought the fun back here in the, in the Columbia Cup rescue team. And we're so happy that you're here and doing your job and how you're doing it. And really, I'm not doing anything. I'm letting them do their job. And they're so good at it. So it makes it easy for me. So they're always making me look good. <laughs> And you've been doing this for a while, and obviously you can see you're very passionate about very, it. Yeah. What is your favorite part of your job? Uh, the favorite, my favorite part of the job is not anything that has to do with, with, with rescuing a, a flipped boat. That's something we don't want to do. Um, my favorite part of the job is watching all these guys come in here on, on Wednesday and Thursday, and it's like a family reunion. It's, it's not the job itself. It's not saving people. It's not, it's not rescuing boats. It's not any of that. It's, it's the camaraderie that we have here in our rescue compound that I love personally. It's like a family reunion every year. I love it. And this is the day that, that I like the most. We hook him on like this so that when he takes off, he can just take off and this will fold back and come right off. Oh. We don't have to come down and unhook ourselves. You're listening to Jamie Council on the Sports Council. Inconveniences can happen at, well, inconvenient times. JRT Mechanical has plumbers and HVAC technicians available 24-7 if an emergency does arise. Or if you feel like your house isn't cooling like it used to. Or if you're tired of a hose leaking from last winter's freeze. JRT is an honest, reliable company that's been in the Pacific Northwest for more than three decades. Give JRT Mechanical a call at 509-314-4314 or visit JRTMechanical.com. If you've got a winery, brewery, or dairy, why buy industrial parts and supplies from across the country? Central Industrial Sales is your local source for supplies and equipment for the dairy, food processing, winery, and brewing industries. We specialize in custom fabrication, industrial cleaning equipment, sanitary fittings, 
valves, pumps, chemicals, and many other supplies. Everything's available through our website, by phone, or by dropping by our office. Call 509-375-4032 or find us at centralindustrialsales.com. Come in and beat the heat. Visit Krispy Kreme for an ice-cold chiller or iced coffee. While in store, check out what's new, like their Passport to Paris collection in honor of the Olympic Games. Support Team USA and grab a dozen or two. Enjoy two dozen fresh original glazed for $24.99 every day. And you're just in time to schedule fundraisers for church, school, or sports teams. It's an easy way to raise some dough. See store for details. Krispy Kreme, 2805 DePort Hill Street in Richland. Come in with a sweet tooth, leave with a smile. You're listening to the Sports Council on 1340 ESPN, the Tri-Cities leader in sports. Water Follies aren't just about the show on the water, but also in the air. Each of the days, an air show allows both racing and rescue teams to take a break for lunch and enjoy the show. Major Lindsay Johnson, I'm the A-10 demo team commander and pilot. And tell me, how did you get into this? Hopping in a plane isn't my idea. The first thing that comes to mind when I would, when people ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up, how did you get into it? Uh, the short stories and long stories of that, at least. Uh, when I was, before I was born and before my brother was born, I've got an older brother, two years older than me. My dad was uh, in the army, enlisted. Uh, he did five years in the infantry, and then he got out uh, and went back to school down in Florida, um, married my mom, they had my brother and I, and he was going to school and getting his CFWI um, and flying and wanted to go into the airlines. Timing just didn't work out. Uh, and then he actually went back into the Army uh, as an officer. And so we moved all around uh, the East Coast. But when I was nine years old, we lived in Georgia. Uh, he bought a Cessna 172, and I got to go fly with him a few times. And while he was doing that, uh, unfortunately, 9-11 happened, uh, and he was reactivated uh, back into the active duty uh, Army deployed on uh, Christmas Day in 2001. And after that, it was, you know, he's back in the active duty that whole time. So when I think about it, like it, as far as like what sparked my interest for flying, uh, it was getting to go fly with him. Uh, and then I very distinctly remember that day, at least um, on Christmas Day in 2001 and 9-11 as a whole. And that's kind of really what sparked me to want to go, you know, serve my country. There's many different ways that people serve their country and obviously you go through the same training as somebody that is in doing this on a mission, but being a part of the demo team, being able to, I guess, share your experience and share your culture that's so deeply rooted in the services, what makes this your why for being a part of the demo team yep. as you're serving your country? So I think the biggest way right now is I've always felt a calling to people uh, and to help inspire. So that was a main thing for me to be able to do this job. And then also uh, what's really awesome about this opportunity is we're a team of 11. So everyone on my team, like me, Going to fly is really awesome, but I can't go fly if it isn't for all the guys on my team. Um, and they do such an awesome job with uh, putting their blood, sweat, and tears into this airplane for us to be able to make this happen. But it's not just me, it's our whole team that's going out there to go recruit, retain, and inspire. So that's the whole mission of the demo team is to go help inspire these young men and women to hopefully join, uh, join the military, become aviators, become mechanics, uh, become public affairs uh, personnel, you name it. Uh, and hopefully just inspire the next generation. Speaking of inspiring the next generation, 
you'll you'll be swearing in some young pilots. Tell me about that and kind of what that what you'll be doing and what that means to you. So uh, the delayed entry pro program, that's what they call it, a depth swearing. So it's young men and women that have uh, made the decision to answer their nation's call. I always say for their decision to go and join, whether that's uh, I'm not 100 percent sure if it's Air Force, Army, Navy, Marines. Uh, I'll get to know that here soon. Uh, but it's always an awesome experience for me. Uh, I typically get a little bit emotional, mostly when I'm talking to their family and friends, because uh, I remember the day that I went to my first day at basic at the Air Force Academy. And I remember my fam family dropping me off and, and wishing me good luck. And to think back to then and to think about where I'm at now, it's just, you know, it, it's hard not to get emotional to see all the, all the different, you know, maybe the trials and tribulations that I've hit along the way, but all the awesome opportunities uh, and things that I've been fortunate enough to be able to be able to be a part of throughout those 14 years that have already passed by. So I look when I look at them, I think uh, it's hard not to think of me, but then also it's awesome to think about uh, what what awesome opportunities they have to look forward to um, in their future. It's probably been a hard trip to get to where you are when you talk about emotions. You know, there's a lot of good and bad emotions that lead to that. What has been the toughest challenge for you to get to where you're at? Um, I think for us, it's always like, you know, it, it really just depends on the season, I say, and you're, you're like in your life or in your career. Um, I've, I've deployed before, I've been stationed overseas, and anytime you're away from family, um, and you're also dealing with like geographic separation, but also just like not being able to chat with them as much as, as often as you would like to, uh, that, that can be a challenge. Uh, but what's been so awesome is the military as a whole, the Air Force as a whole, has like I have people that have become my family too. So uh, while they're not, they may not have like my genes or they're not, not me genetically paired with me type deal, uh, we've become this uh, family and that's what like our team is here. So we're, we're gone from home a lot, but we've become so close and it's, it's been awesome to be able to be a part of that. And you're away from home flying over the Tri-Cities. So what do you think of being able to fly over the Tri-Cities? Uh, it's an awesome opportunity. I've gotten to go uh, do a couple shows here in Washington so far this year, uh, and I love it. It's it's always gorgeous scenery coming into here. Uh, we're hoping that the skies clear up a little bit better this weekend, um, but we're, I'm really, really looking forward to it. I'm looking to fly, and I always love over the water shows, so we hope uh, everybody enjoys it. We'll see you up in the air. And uh, final question, what message would you leave people? What do you want them to know? You've been deployed and also you're flying the A-10 over the Tri-Cities for the Water Follies Air Show. Uh, for anybody that's interested, whether that's in aviation or joining the military, the biggest thing I'll say to you is just uh, have a good attitude and a good work ethic. That's uh, that's what's helped get me to where I am uh, today. You know, I always say people are always like, oh, you're just, some people are just lucky. It's like, you've got to work really, really hard for, to have luck on your side. It doesn't always just happen that way. So um, that's the biggest thing I'll say. And I've. It's been a wild ride for me these past 14 years. I wouldn't cha change, it, change it for the world. Uh, and I hope uh, whoever decides uh, to join the military, become an aviator, uh, they have a lot to look forward to. Where opportunity meets preparation. Yes, exactly. <laughs>
refinery and brewing industries. We specialize in custom fabrication, industrial cleaning equipment, sanitary fittings, valves, pumps, chemicals, and many other supplies. Everything's available through our website, by phone, or by dropping by our office. Call 509-375-4032 or find us at centralindustrialsales.com. Krispy Kreme is celebrating July with delicious patriotic donuts and stay cool with an iced coffee or frozen lemonade. And don't forget to schedule your fundraiser. Perfect for sports teams, churches, and much more. They take the hassle away with a digital coupon. Download the Krispy Kreme app for all the latest deals, plus find out how you can support Team USA in the upcoming Olympics. Krispy Kreme at 2805 Duport Tail Street in Richland. Come with a sweet tooth, leave with a smile. You're listening to the Sports Council on 1340 ESPN, the Tri-Cities leader in sports. Another year of the water follies down, not without a hitch. Between the multiple blowovers and low water levels disallowing H1 racing on Friday, it looked a little different than years past, but hey, it's memorable. The H1 Unlimited Series heads to Seattle this weekend for Seafair. At the Water Follies, Corey Peabody and Strong Racing took home the spoils, claiming Bernie's tree again for next year. But also on the podium was Andrew Tate in second and Dustin Eccles in third. It was Eccles in the U40 flavor pack by Bucket List Racing, third time on the podium. Meanwhile, Tate in the U91 Miss Goldman Real Estate by Miss Madison Racing took second for the first time this racing season. The hole is the same boat that Jimmy Shane used in his finale with Miss Madison. But while Tate didn't claim the Apollo Columbia Cup, he still sits on top of the leaderboard in driver and team high points, trailed by Corey Peabody in the U9. Tate is on the prowl for his second H1 championship, while Peabody, who lost by a hair to teammate J. Michael Kelly last year, is still on the hunt for his first H1 championship in his career. Thanks to his ever-faithful hardware in Tri-Cities, this year's race to sit atop the H1 leaderboards just got a lot more interesting. Well, that'll wrap up this week's show of the Sports Council. A reminder that the Sports Council happens four times a month, Thursdays at 11.30 a.m. on 1340 ESPN Radio, your Tri-Cities leader in sports, on demand at 1340ESPNRadio.com. It's also available via podcast. Wherever you get your podcasts, just search for the Sports Council, as well as there is a video portion that you can find on SK Plus. SK Plus is an app that you can find in the Apple Store, available for iPhones, iPads, or Apple TV. You can also find it on SkeeterBuggins.com. Thank you to Stevens Media Group and Skeeter Buggins Productions with the help of the Sports Council. We'll catch you next time. Until then, I'm Jamie Council.